and welcome. Today we're talking about The Power Method, the most recent book by Tiago Forte. This organizational strategy isn't just about tidying up your desk, it's about aligning your daily grind with your lifetime goals. So without further ado, let's dive straight into this organized abyss. So what is PARA? PARA is an acronym that stands for Projects, Areas, Resources and Archives. Projects refers to those tasks with a clear end date, a site or planning a birthday party. Areas of responsibility are those ongoing aspects of our life, like maintaining good health or nurturing relationships. Resources are the tools and information we collect to aid in our project and areas. These are your web clippings and so forth. The archives are where your completed projects and outdated resources go to retire. Archives are also where your new projects should stem from. You should lean on all of your old work as your first point of call to see if this is where a, a pro for creating a new project. So let's get to some hands-on tips from the book. Let's start by creating some distinct folders for each project and archiving any old files that you don't need anymore. This keeps your workspace clean and your mind clear. Okay, so the first step that Tiago recommends is creating an archive folder. So let's do that and then we'll create a subfolder with today's date on it. Give it the number four so it sits correctly in our para hierarchy. Now let's give it today's date. I used to, I like to use the reverse date, so year, month, days, just so that the system sorts it automatically for me. And then let's start moving everything in here. You'll notice I'll leave my inbox folder here. This was my encounters folder in the access methodology, but I've already renamed it to inbox. You leave the inbox here so that you can keep a place for your fleeting notes so that you know what's going on and uh, have, a, have an inbox, a place to process new entries. Now we want to create a projects directory so that we can carry on our research on Dr. Edward Tuft here. So we'll give that the label of one project so that it sorts automatically for us, as you can see. Now, we're creating a project for Dr. Edward Tuft, so let's review our archive to make sure we don't have anything for Dr. Tuft in here already. And under our access methodology, we had a folder already dedicated to Mr. Tuft himself. And so we'll drag that up to projects here. We also have this map of content, which we will pull into Mr. Tuft as well. Let's do a quick search on Tuft up here. Projects, there is a Tuft footnotes that's in the Cornell Notes Learning Vault, so we don't need that one. But it looks like we have firmly captured everything that we need to there. And so for Para, this is essentially the folders that you need to get started. The, uh, the other two, he doesn't recommend actually creating them until you start using them, which are the areas and the resources directories. And so in building our second brain out, you would identify an area here where we would look into our, our inbox. We have our idea, and maybe that idea is actually uh, a note or a, a, a highlight from our, our Kindle reading or a to-do item or, or a YouTube video that we want to watch or have watched and taken notes on. And so let's take this idea and actually process it in one of our weekly sessions that he recommends taking and we'll move it into a resources folder now. So we create that as three resources because that is our number in the hierarchy. And we want to move this idea into resources. And as simple as that, we have a nice flat structure which follows our Zettelkasten methodology in that it's a, a single directory for your cards and your knowledge and your projects can lean on your, your resources and archive to, to grow those out. And once you complete the project, it's as simple as dragging the project into your archive and you're all done. The only other thing that you would maybe consider is working through our processing. So we have an area which might be for our uh, for our blog, which is an area of responsibility for me. So we'll create our new folder, which is two areas. And then we might create a subsequent folder in there called blog. And then we'll grab our command palette and we'll pull that into our blog. And maybe we have our untitled things as well, which has our Cornell Notes live demonstration. And so we'll pull that into our area, which is the blog. And so there you have it. That is the quickest way to set up a power methodology. One thing that I will touch on briefly here is that it's recommended to keep this matching up with your folder structures. So let's have a quick look over at uh, an, an empty directory on Windows. So inside our documents folder, we have an empty directory. I've called a para demonstration. And just to match up what we're doing here and creating them just in time, we'll have our, we'll have our one projects folder, which will create 
another fold around called Tuft. We call it Tuft because that matches up with our projects there. It's exactly the same name. And so in here, save our files that are related to our Tuft project that might not go into there. I'm using these images as an example, but usually you would pick something that's larger, like a video file or something such that you don't want to actually store that inside your vault. And so you just create these just in time as required. So if you find you're going into a, a new video for your blog in the areas thing here, in the folders directory, if you had a video that was recorded, you would then create the, uh, the two areas directory. And in here, you would then create your area of responsibility, which would be blog. Again, this matches up and you would drop your files in here, such as your, your videos and other recordings. Forte lays down a simple roadmap. Text goes into a note-taking app, collaborative content like files go into cloud storage, and sensitive info go into an encrypted password manager app. A standout feature of the Power Method is the weekly review ritual. This isn't about checking off completed tasks, it's about realigning your projects with your long-term goals and identifying any discrepancies between your actions and your objectives. Moving on to the realm of teamwork, Forte emphasizes that the written communication is the backbone of effective knowledge sharing within teams. It's about building a culture where ideas and decisions are shared in writing, fostering transparency and collective growth. Before we wrap up, let's touch on the three habits which Forte introduces to maintain a fluid organizational system. Organize according to outcomes, organize just in time, not just in case, and keep things informal and adaptable. So what does he mean by organize by outcomes? This is really just taking into account your projects or your areas of responsibility and defining which one is the most appropriate spot for them. If they're ongoing tasks like maintaining your tax or work or or something like that, then you know organizing that into your areas folder is the best bet. Whereas if you've got a short-term deadline-driven objective, then that's a project. Number two, organizing just in time, not just in case. This is about creating the folders as they're required in the situations or in the sections of your knowledge management system and file structures so that they match at the time you need them, not, not a moment sooner, just in time. Even so far as to when you're creating your para folders to only create the ones you need at that moment in time. Tiago actually recommends starting with just projects and areas and creating the rest as you go. And then keeping things informal and adaptable. You're not trying to write war and peace or create a new manuscript, although you may be, that might be one of your projects. But notes should be short and easy to consume and that helps you with making your projects move faster. So in conclusion, the Power Method is not just an organizational tool, it's a philosophy aimed at elevating your productivity and aligning your actions with your core values and long-term goals. It's about making the organizational process a breeze so that you have more time to do what you love. Thank you for joining me on this organization adventure. Stay tuned, we'll be exploring each component of the Power Method in depth in upcoming videos. And remember, a clutter-free space leads to a clutter-free mind. See you in the next one.